one in four people battle with a mental health disorder. And at the top of that is depression, which is estimated to affect over 16 million Americans alone. So needless to say, I am very happy to be bringing you this video. I'm using the sun as my lighting and it's playing games, but we are not gonna pay attention to that. I'm just setting that, that tone because this, the content of this video is way more important than the lighting, right? If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Melanie Santos. I am a wellness leader, speaker, writer, New York City-based digital creator, mama, wife, all the things. And I've been using my digital channels to advocate for mental health, physical health, and spirituality since 2013. My work is deeply rooted in changing the world by guiding people, by sharing my journey and my struggles. So this wouldn't be the first time that I share that I've been struggling with clinical depression and generalized anxiety disorder since forever. Since I just mentioned generalized anxiety disorder, please check out my other video where I talk about how I cope with anxiety linked up here and in the description box. Before I get into this, there are many videos from many different human beings about depression, about how they cope with it, about their best tips. But I also feel like there's a lot of awareness in the world right now, a lot of empty awareness. I'm not at all complaining. It's amazing that so many people are finally speaking up about mental health, about mental health disorders, about mental illness. But I personally feel a responsibility to carry a torch really high for women, for people of color, and for people in marginalized communities to show that you can thrive with mental illness. Now, before we get into the what I do and what you can do, let's talk about depression. Let's talk about my depression and what it can look and feel like. Now, let me get something straight. Just because I have good days does not mean that I all of a sudden don't have it. For me, there has always been a difference between being depressed and having clinical depression. Someone can be depressed and be sad, but not have or not be diagnosed with depression. I was diagnosed with depression when I was a teenager and I ignored it for a long time until it almost killed me. And I'll tell you that story later on down the video, but I always have depression of some degree. Now in talking about degrees, I'm referring to the mental health pain scale. Now, the mental health pain scale is a lot like the pain scale that you see when you go to the ER, when you go to the emergency room, where you go in, you see a, a nurse, and they ask you to value your pain with a number. Same thing. It was the first thing that I saw during my very first therapy appointment in 2014, and I have never forgotten it since. We'll talk more about it in detail later, but let's go through the numbers so I can give you an idea of what my depression is like. Now, when I'm on the mild side, I'm either a one, two, or three. That means I'm feeling okay, I'm all right. I have the energy to get things done. I'm probably doing things around the house. I'm interested in getting work done. I'm being a good human. I'm being a good wife. I'm being a good mom. It's still there, but it's not affecting my daily life in a way that it's, it's stopping anything. Okay, moving on to when my depression is more moderate, I am either a four, a five, or a six, which is already starting to climb the scale. And I am not okay. I don't really have the energy to do many things, but I still try to push myself to get things done for myself, for my husband and for my daughter, for my family. My body might feel very heavy. I might feel lethargic. It's starting to get hard for me to do normal things like shower and brush my teeth and eat or make food and i'm probably taking hours if not entire days off of work at this point point. and for reference i work for myself so it's easier for me to let myself slip entirely because i don't have anybody governing me or my work now let's get into when my depression gets really severe and it does get there sometimes i'm either a seven eight a nine or a ten at this point things are very bad and at my worst, it's it can be life-threatening. When I'm in this range, I have no energy for anything. I'm not showering, I'm not eating unless I'm force-fed, um, I'm not brushing my teeth, I'm not getting out of bed, I'm not doing anything. At my absolute worst, my mother and my husband have had to bathe me before and that's not something that I'm proud to say, but I have to give you context just so that you know that it can get this bad. My body starts to change. I get extremely pale. Um, I start to feel achy and very, very painful. Um, I start to suffer from headaches and migraines. It's, uh, it's pretty awful. 
with that said it's extremely hard for me to show up as a person nonetheless a wife a mother a friend a daughter a business owner um i'm not even showing up for myself and even if i needed to i probably don't want to at my absolute absolute worst i can stay in bed all day accompanied by nothing but my suicidal ideations now with all of that said that is my depression that is not me that is not melanie santos i always somehow resurface i always remember who i am so allow me to share with you the seven to ten things i forget the number that i do regularly to cope with my clinical depression I think that the most important step and the most important thing that I do is to have real awareness about where I'm at. Like I mentioned, the first thing that I saw when I entered my very first therapy appointment in 2014 was the mental health pain scale, the mental pain scale. My therapist at the time asked me to gauge where my depression was on a scale from one being the least and 10 being the most painful. And I had never thought about scaling my mood that way i still use it every single day it not only allows me to know where i'm at again and uh kind of put a number to how i'm feeling and know what i'm initially going to be capable of or what i think i'm going to be capable of that day so i can give myself grace through my process but it also allows me to give this number to my partner and effectively communicate how exactly how i'm feeling so that he can help me I also make sure to journal or write down uh, these numbers somewhere so that I can keep track of my mood fluctuations and use them in therapy if uh, my therapist happens to ask how I've been doing if it's been a while since I've been there. Now I remixed it and created our own version and made it available to you to download for free on my website. So make sure that you check out the links in my description box or visit melaniesantos.co slash mind. I hope that it is super helpful and I hope that you like it. Next is seeking help from a professional. Now this wasn't always easy for me. I'm not gonna shove this down your throat. I'm gonna give you the truth first. This was not easy for me in the beginning. Talking about mental health was not open in my community and therapy was absolutely never an option. Ay, Dios mío. Otra vez con ese show. Pero qué te pasa? It's not that easy. I've been talking to my psychologist and she thinks... La psicóloga esa, pero si tú no estás loco. Te mandamos a la universidad. And suddenly, everything is about self-care, therapy, and all of this white people nonsense. Now, let me preface this by saying no shade to my parents, no shade to my family. We have worked very hard and very long years to get to where we're at. Uh, but I still tell this story because it's where so many of you guys are at with, with your own family and with your own friends. So I just want to share, you know, the behind story so that you don't think it's all, you know, butterflies and sparkles. No. I grew up thinking that there was nothing wrong with me and that I was just being dramatic. That therapy was only meant for crazy or white people. That mental illnesses were very rare. And that prayer fixed everything. Now, now that I'm in my 30s, knowing what I know, in retrospect, I've been dealing with this my entire life. But it wasn't until um, it was really at my height where depression was really at its height in my life when I was about 24 uh, and I was debilitated for over a week with a really terrible bout of depression, severe anxiety, and suicidal thoughts that my parents, who I lived with at the time, considered that I might actually have a problem and that I probably needed help. That was when um, we made the decision to schedule me for my very first therapy appointment, and that was in 2014. Now take it from me, therapy is awesome. If you strip away the name, then you're just meeting a non-biased professional that can help you make sense of and acquire the skills to work through the painful situations that are really stopping you from living life to your fullest. Now, some of the questions that I usually get are, how do I find one? What do I do if I can't afford therapy? Is virtual therapy even good? And how do I know if I have an actual problem? Now, I will answer all those questions in a blog post that is accompanying this video. So make sure that you, again, check out the description box. There's a lot of resources there. But I will answer the how do I know if I have a problem bit. 
watch out for warning signs like the ones that i described earlier in this video depression can have many symptoms but definitely scan your body spend time with yourself see how it is that you're feeling but you are safest speaking to a medical professional or scheduling a screening with a mental health professional. I find that just having a conversation over the phone uh, with a therapist, having an initial phone consultation uh, is free usually and is also risk-free. doesn't mean that you have to sign up with them. Um, there are many options in terms of payment and all that. And again, I'll detail all that in my blog post. But just talk to them over the phone. Tell them how you're feeling. They definitely won't diagnose you over the phone but you can at least get an idea of if it's a good idea to go see a therapist which the answer usually is it's always a good idea just know that you have nothing to lose in talking about the way that you feel with someone you trust with a medical professional it's actually a really good first step in, in your recovery next is eating a balanced diet now up until the last few years healthy eating was also very stigmatized in my latino community it took me a very long time to realize that it doesn't have to be bland or expensive, that I don't need to eat a meat and a starch in every single meal, and that plant-based eating actually makes me feel good from the inside out. It makes my mental health symptoms lessen. Now, aside from what we already know about eating a whole diet, about eating fruits and veggies and grains and legumes, there has been a lot of research done linking whole plant-based eating to better mental health, to better physical health, obviously, and to better spiritual connection. If you care to know more about that in detail, I challenged myself to eating only plant-based foods for 40 days last year and it completely changed my life. And I vlogged every step of the way for six weeks in six different uh, vlogs. I called the challenge Whole Glow 40 and I'll link all of the videos in the description box for you to check out. I also have an amazing blog post talking all about it, the benefits, the rules, what I did, what I didn't do, resources, all that. I'll link that in the description box as well. We're midway through this video and if it's helpful, if you find it useful, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because there's much more where this came from. Next is taking vitamins and supplements. Now I get many of the nutrients that I need for a healthy brain and body from my diet, but because I've opted out of antidepressants, I take supplements to make sure that I get the most brain boosting neurotransmitter support that I can get. Probably the most important of all of these is my multivitamin. I've been taking Ritual vitamins for the past couple of years with no complaints. Ritual's really awesome. They have folate, omega-3, B12, D3, iron, K2, boron, vitamin E, and magnesium, which are all extremely helpful, useful, really important for your overall health, but for the general production of, you know, the good working brain chemicals that make you happy. Most of my work is rooted in linking mental health to physical health and spiritual health. So when your body is good, your mind is good. And when those are good, your spirit is good. So taking a good multivitamin is the first step uh, that you should take in learning about and taking supplements. Now, other supplements that I either take right now or have taken in the past that help me cope with uh, symptoms of depression and or help me enhance my mood are 5-HTP, which is an amino acid that your body naturally produces as a precursor to serotonin, which is the feel-good chemical, the messenger that sends signals between your nerve cells and helps regulate our moods. Also, St. John's wort, which is an herbal mood supplement. Back in the day, I used to take SAM-E, which is an abbreviation for a really long name that I cannot pronounce, which is a compound made naturally in the body, and it serves many important functions, including helping produce serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine. I also currently take adaptogens like ashwagandha, which are also really, really amazing. They're herbs that literally help organisms adapt and cope with stress. They help me with my depression, my anxiety, my energy, and even my libido, which is something also affected by my mental health that not many people like to talk about. Now, all of these are linked in the description box. If you want to check them out, I do get a little, little, tiny bit of a commission if you purchase these products through my link. So if you want to support me, this is a way that you can. 
Now these alternative methods have proved effective for me in combination with all the other things mentioned in this video, but I'm not at all, you know, putting anything against medication or traditional treatments. Always speak to a medical professional about what would work best for you. Listening to music. Music is everything to me. It is a time machine. As soon as you pop in some headphones and you play a song, it takes you directly back to the moment when you first heard it. It reminds you of people, places, things, feelings, anything. It's just that wonderful. And besides transporting you through time, it can also transport you through different vibrations. Music helps me lift my vibration so incredibly much. When I am super depressed and I'm really, really, really low, I can listen to a few things. Sometimes I really just feel like listening to music that I resonate with, and that's really sad music. Heart in my stomach, throat blocked by head and night. And sometimes I want to raise my vibration, and sometimes I'm maybe on the moderate side of the pain scale, and I'm okay to listen to something a little bit more upbeat, so... So I do that. The sun will come out. Nothing good ever comes easy. I know times are rough. But winners don't quit. So don't you give up. All in all, music is so incredibly healing for me. And I try to listen to music every single day. I, I don't know how I could live without it. Now, I hope you don't think I was going to leave you like that. I've created two very special playlists with some of my favorite healing songs. One for when you want to listen to music that you resonate with. One that, you know, has a little bit of lower vibrating tones, things that speak to you, sad music, if you will. And one that has more upbeat um, messages in it. One that will help you rise and raise your vibration. There are Spotify playlists. Feel free to follow me on spotify i happen to think i make amazing playlists uh, but they're available for you to download and listen to for free so please check out the links in the description box now along with music comes moving your body now sometimes it's harder for me to get in movement um, especially if i am higher on the mental pain scale just because of the physical toll that depression takes on my body but if I can get at least 30 minutes in of exercise, of yoga, of dancing, then I am gold. The endorphins that I build up from, you know, doing this yoga, from moving my body in ecstatic dance in my living room or at a party, you know, sometimes I do make it out to see human beings when I'm not feeling my best. And I happen to just dance it out as soon as I get there and I'm, and I'm cool. When I'm real, real good, I'm consistent in the gym. I'm consistent with my workouts. And that's when I really see a change, when I'm exercising, when I'm really moving, when I'm changing the way my body looks, I'm also changing the way that my mind feels. Next is taking magnesium baths. Now we know that baths are really good for just relaxing your body, but I'm talking about incorporating magnesium. Magnesium is the bomb, it is the fourth most abundant mineral in our body and it plays several really important roles in our wellness. That includes boosting physical performance, playing a critical role in brain function and mood, and lowering inflammation just to name a few. Now, while we're on inflammation, inflammation is super important to brain health, which is why I made the decision to go dairy free, to eat uh, non-inflammatory foods forgot to mention that earlier but had to get that in now i'm already getting the magnesium that i need through the foods that i eat and through the vitamins that i take but i try to top my levels by putting just a cup of epsom salt in my warm baths nothing feels better than giving your kids something to do than having you know your family all in different parts of your home doing something so you can get at least 30 minutes to yourself so that you can jump in a bath put a cup of epsom salt in there throw some Throw some essential oils in there. This is one of my faves, the Woolsey's Muscle Relief. It has some amazing combinations in here of peppermint, lemon, lime, all these beautiful, good things, and just feeling super relaxed in this bath. But besides that, just feeling accomplished. Like, yes, I was able to get myself into a bath. I was able to care for myself in a way that I might not usually do. And this is self-care for me. And it's just, ah, I did a good thing. 
I did a good thing for myself. Now, Epsom salt is obviously the easiest, cheapest, most accessible, but you can also try your best to find magnesium flakes, which is uh, magnesium in its purest form. But again, they're not as accessible and a little bit more expensive and ain't nobody got time for that. And lastly, which I think summarizes and encompasses everything that I've mentioned here, is just making decisions to do the things that feel good to me, whether or not I want to do them. I know that's really hard. I know it's really hard to get up from that bed, to get up from the floor, wherever it is that you feel safest when you're depressed, to go drink water, to go take a bath, to put headphones on and listen to music, to pick up the phone, to call a therapist. Um, but just taking that first step is all you need. And then just taking that next step and then taking that next step. And then the sooner you know, you're, you're already doing these things that act as self-care for you. And next thing you know after that, you find yourself doing other things like spending time with the people that make you feel good. Spending time with people that uh, raise your vibration is one of the quickest ways to do that. We are all, you know, souls in a living body. We all vibrate on a certain frequency. And when you are a depressed person like myself, um, and when you are suffering from, because I love to say that I battle with and I thrive, but sometimes it really is suffering. And, you know, I'm not afraid to say that. Um, when you are suffering from a really bad depressive bout, really bad depressive episode, it's really hard, again, to do any of these things. But finding yourself in the company of the people, the things, the places, the practices that you trust, um, that always seem to pull you up when you're down, there, there's nothing better than that. I hope that this video has been helpful. If there is something that I missed, I'm gonna just throw it in the blog post. So again, I've mentioned the five million and three times in this video, but please check out the links in the description box. Visit me at melaniesantos.co slash mind. Follow me on Instagram where I give you and share my journey in real time. I'm sharing, you know, when I'm depressed, if I'm feeling up to it. I'm sharing that I just got out of a depressive episode and what I did. I'm sharing where I'm speaking about mental health and physical health and spirituality. All the things are always being done on my social media. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook. Uh, let me know if you want to see more videos about depression, what questions you have, if you have any suggestions, all that stuff, just drop it in the, in the comments. I wish you luck on your journey. I send you love. I send you light. Um, and I hope that if you've learned anything from this, it's that you're not alone. You're absolutely not alone. And there are ways to cope with the symptoms of this very terrible disease. Um, and that although it cannot be cured 100%, we can fight. We can continue to fight as much as possible. I hope that you'll continue to fight. And I hope that you'll fight alongside me.